All right, so let's move on to materials. What do I mean by materials, by the way? Well, you've heard me say materials, shading, texturing, it's all kind of talking about the same thing. It's taking 3D objects and making them look like wood, leather, plastic, whatever it's supposed to be. Now, let me show you a very simple way of applying a shader, and this is probably what you've seen elsewhere uh, before. We're going to create a new geometry network, and this time that's going to contain the backdrop. So real fast, let's make a backdrop. I'll set down a grid right there. And we don't see Vivi because he's not displayed in the other container right here. So let's go back in here and we're going to merge our magical sphere with Vivi so that we can see them both. There's a very easy way of doing that. Highlight both nodes and then just hold down Alt and drag out right here. That will automatically create this merge node and merge those two objects together in the same stream. So now, when we go back to our backdrop, we can see that VV and the sphere are ghosted out. By the way, if you wanna change that behavior, you can always go up to the top right and select these different options right here. But anyway, let's click on the multi-widget tool, drag out what we need, we want a backdrop, so we're gonna go pretty far out, right about there, and also far out in these directions as well. So once we have something like that, if I wanna make a relative reference, you can just drag the text right here over to the parameter. So I'm going to drag the text of columns into the rows value and say relative channel reference right there. Now as I turn up the columns, that turns up the rows. So that's really cool. I can also go beyond 50 by holding down the middle mouse over the text and dragging up like this. So let's go maybe about 170-ish divisions. As for select, this time I'm going to select points. So up here we can select primitives, that's the faces, edges, or points. I will say points, and let's see if we can just, there we go, get all of those edge points. T for transform, that's going to allow us to bring this up and that creates this edit sop down here. Bring that up, scroll down, and you'll see that we have the soft radius. Hold down middle mouse and bring this up so that we can make a gradual increase like so. All right, so now that we have our backdrop, let's go back here and I will show you a basic way of applying a material. We have our material context right here. So let's just say material context. I'll talk about the various shaders that we have here in a moment, but for right now, you're going to want to use the principled shader. So we'll just say principled shader right there. And then we just drag this onto the backdrop. Let's call this our backdrop material. Set this to a darker color right about there. And that's about it. Just drag and drop shaders. That's good for objects that just have one shader associated with them. That wouldn't be good for Vivi though, because he has all kinds of shaders that were made for him. He has a shader for his vest and he has a shader for his hats and for various parts of him. So this drag and drop method is really good for simple objects, but it's not going to be ideal for complex ones like Vivi, who's a character. When we go back to the object level and we highlight the backdrop network, you'll notice that this render tab is now boldened. And whenever you see that bold text, that means something in there is not at the default value. So let's go ahead and click that, and we'll see that our material is loaded in right here. And that material also has a path. So think of this kind of like a folder directory. It's saying, hey, look here at forward slash material, so that's this, and then select the backdrop material. So whenever we drag and drop, we are essentially filling in this parameter right here. However, I wanna show you something interesting. Let's go back to the material context and to make a copy of a node, just hold down Alt and drag out that node. So we're going to duplicate our backdrop and this time we'll call this our backdrop material 002. And we're going to change the color here to red. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because we have a way of overriding what's here in this render material tab. 
So if I go inside this backdrop network, you'll notice that I can set down a material node. And what this will allow me to do is assign a SOP level material. In other words, apply a material based on a selection of faces rather than the entire object. Here's how that works. In the group, I can select these primitives. So I can go for all of these guys right here. And in your scene, it'll probably look something like that. If you don't want to manually select that and you just want to say grab everything, then just go ahead and say star. Anytime you see that star, that tells Houdini to just do everything. So now everything is going to get a material assigned to it. What is that material? I can click on that far right button right there and browse for our backdrop material 002. As soon as I do that, it's now overridden what we have here on the object level material assignment. So in Houdini, I'll say that one more time, a face assigned material or a face shader is going to override the object level shader right here. So a lot of times, if you don't know why a shader is not showing up or a material is not working, it's because you probably have some kind of material right here that's on the faces, which is overriding anything on the object level. Here's another really important thing to understand. When we set down this material node, we assigned the geometry and attributes. See, up here at the top, it says attributes, primitive attributes. And check this out. If I middle mouse click and hold on this node, we have two attributes right now. We have P for position, that is a point attribute, and we have one primitive attribute called the shop underscore material path. Attributes essentially describe something about the object. And when we have this primitive attribute called shop underscore material path, we are describing where the viewport should go when it tries to find the shader. So we're describing which shader belongs to the faces. If you want to see this information, we can go up to the top and click on the geo spreadsheet. And if we go here to this little primitive icon, we can see that we have shop underscore material path. And this is what's containing the location of that shader. But whoa, wait a second. We are starting to talk about attributes. What exactly is an attribute? This is actually one of the most important things to understand as a beginner when you use Houdini. Okay, well, an attribute, like I said, it describes something about the object. Let's say that I have this uh, water bottle right here. You can kind of see it, it's just a black water bottle, right? What you could say to describe this water bottle is that it's black. So there could be an attribute that has color and that color is describing an RGB value, red, green, blue of 000, saying that this water bottle is black. So again, that attributes value describes something about the object. Or maybe we describe the weight of this water bottle. So I could say that the mass is 10, which might mean 10 units of some kind of mass measurement. <laughs> um, we can describe anything we want. We can describe where the shader lives. We can describe how the viewport should show you this object. Attributes essentially just describe things. And what we're doing in Houdini is essentially just modifying attributes. That's really what we're doing, okay? So if you have a simulation, let's say a uh, destruction RBD simulation, we describe all kinds of things about the object. How likely is it for the constraints to break? So, you know, what's the mass? How strong are the glue constraints in between pieces? We basically describe all of these different things. We can then feed it to a solver, which understands those things, and then it gives us a result. So back to, again, the definition of an attribute. It's just there to describe something. That's it. And one more thing about that, that information is attached to the points of an object, the vertices, the primitives, or the detail. So when we go back to our geometry spreadsheet right here, 
we can see that up top. Here are the point attributes. So data is attached to those points or it's associated. This makes sense for position because this is the position of every single points. Vertex attributes are similar to points, but they are associated with a specific primitive. So in practice, this is where you store your UV information or the vertices might store normal information. So the normal is which direction a face is pointing towards. We'll talk more about the differences between points and vertices in the future, but we can store data on that. For right now, think of the primitives as the faces, as the polygons of the object. That's not a true technical definition of primitives, but we're going to talk about that more in the future. So just hang tight on that. And then we have the detail attributes. Think of this detail as information that travels along with our node network. So that information isn't really attached or associated with the object in 3D space. It's more so attached to the entire stream of data in our node network. When I first started Houdini, this concept of attributes was a little bit fuzzy at first. So don't worry if it doesn't make total sense yet. For right now, just remind yourself and tell yourself that an attribute describes something, anything about the object. And then we can take that information and give it to a solver or give it to a render engine or give it to our viewport to have some kind of effect that we want. Allow me to show you why this is important to understand. Let's go ahead and delete this material assignment on our backdrop and head on over to VV. If we middle mouse this node, we have all kinds of attributes happening. There were attributes that were brought over from that FBX file. So we have this FBX rotation and this FBX scale. We have name, we have shop material path. We have all of these different things. But notice how on the shop underscore material path, again, that's where the shader assignments happen. We have seven unique strings. I'll talk about what strings mean here in a moment, but we have seven unique shaders on Vivi, right? If I set down a color node, we can color things in our viewports. So I will change this color type here to random from attributes. And then I will type in shop underscore material path. At first we won't see anything because we are looking at point attributes right here. Let's change this to primitives because remember, the shader is associated with the faces, the primitives, and there we go. Now we can see all the different areas that have a unique value for shop underscore material path. In our geo spreadsheets, when we set down this color node, we made the CD attributes. In Houdini, CD is color, and we can see that's R, G, and B in the square brackets. That tells our viewport to show us these colors that we see right here. So that's what our color node did. And actually, if I went back up here, you'll notice that we no longer have that color in there anymore. So when we go to our geo spreadsheets, we want to change this shop underscore material path to actually point towards a shader that's going to get applied to these faces. How do we do that? Well, we are going to create a node called a string edit node or an attribute string edit. We'll talk about data types later on, but whenever we say string, we are saying edits a attribute value that's made up of words. So the words or the text in here right now, the legs.001 need to be changed. Let's go ahead and operate on our shop material path. And in the editor, we can change this from, let's say something that we see in here. So let's just say legs.001 to something else. What's that going to be? Well, we can just browse for our red shader for right now. Forward slash material, backdrop material two. I can just go with my down arrows, highlight that, hit enter, and there we go. Now we have changed those values to that shader. And guess what? Now we have 
assigned that shader to those faces. And that correlates with the original faces that the artist had in mind when those shaders were assigned. So hopefully that all makes sense for right now. Like I said, attributes take a minute to get used to when you're starting this for the first time. So just keep going. If it feels a little bit fuzzy, it's all right. And in the next video, we're going to talk about uh, a few more things when it comes to materials.